Welcome back to Senate Education, Thursday, April 7th, 304. Hoping that we will finish this third chunk today so that we will be ready for our witnesses on this topic tomorrow. So, floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Beth. St. James, Office of Legislative Counsel. We are continuing our walkthrough of chunk three of the H727. We are on page five, line nine, section five. And this is, again, meant to address a withdrawal that is our uh, uh, for withdrawal that is underway. So the first section we talked about, section four today, was for a withdrawal that had already happened under current law. Section five is for a withdrawal that is underway but has not been finally approved. So again, this section is going to apply to any town, school district um, that fits this, these specific criteria. And those, we've moved on from that one. Um, we, those specific uh, criteria are found starting on line 13. So for the purposes of this section, um, the, uh, this is important. So the provisions of 16 VSA 724 that were in effect prior to the effective date of section three of this act, so current withdrawal language, are deemed to authorize withdrawal from a unified union school district created by the State Board of Education in its final report. So that means that current law Remember, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, that current law, current section 724, talks about withdrawing from a school district, a voter-created school district. So there's that open question of law on whether a town can withdraw from a state-created merged district. So this subdivision one is saying the provisions of current law today are deemed to authorize that withdrawal for state for a state created um, uh, merger. But that's just one condition of this section line. The rest of the conditions are the section shall apply solely to a withdrawal action initiated by a town within the union district pursuant to the uh, former section 724 of so current law as we sit here today of if each of the following actions occurred prior to the effective date of chunks one and two. So the state board created the union district in its order, the state board created district. Prior to the issuance of the order, the district that merged to form the union district submitted a proposal to the Secretary of Education and the state board setting forth the details of their self-evaluation and a proposal for an alternative governance structure pursuant to Act 46. The voters of the petitioning town approved a proposal to withdraw from the union district. So the petitioning town voted and said yes. The voters of each of the other towns within the union district voted and said yes. The State Board of Education and then the State Board of Education has not approved or taken action to approve the withdrawal proposal or declare that a new district is reconstituted. So this section applies to a state created merged district where the votes have happened and now the action is sitting with the state board. Everyone clear on that? Okay. So this is a little different. So it's a different situation than um, section five. There's a lot of the same concepts, but it's just a little bit of a different procedure. So in section, uh, I'm sorry, this is section five, um, talking about section four. So in section five, at any time, I'm on uh, page six, line 16, at any time after the effective date of this section, but on or before the regular September 2022 state board meeting, the self-selected representatives of the petitioning town, remember there's no new school district yet, they're still a part of the union district, so there's no governing body, so that's why that self-selected um, representatives term is used of the petitioning town and the board of the union district shall submit to the state board in writing. So this is similar to the status report that was required in section four, but this is a different posture. So the report requirement is different. 
So I, I just want to ask a question about E. Um, so this allows for the withdrawal to go ahead regardless of whether the state board has approved it or not. What page are you on? I'm, e. oh, I'm at page six, on okay. yep. line 13, a big E. Um, yes. So I'm, I'm trying to put this into context um, myself. So that would allow that to ha that withdrawal to happen regardless of the state board's action. So what E, e is no. a part of the criteria that the, yes. the town has to fit in in order for the section to apply. So it's not actually telling anyone that they can or can't okay. do anything yet. It's just saying you have to check this box. And the E box is that the State Board of Education has not approved or taken action to approve the withdrawal proposal or to declare a new school okay. district. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we're on page seven. So the reporting requirement in section five is um, the petitioning town and the union district have to file a report explaining the ways in which the current plan of the petitioning town and the union district, um, which the current plan of the petitioning town and the union district for operation after withdrawal conforms to or differs from the section nine proposal. So remember one of the boxes that has to be checked for this section to apply is that it's a state created um, district and that before the state created it, it submitted an alternative governance structure plan, and that's the Section 9 proposal. So this requirement on lines one through three is saying, you've already submitted what you think should have happened to the State Board of Education in your alternative governance structure plan. And we, uh, the State Board, went with merging instead. So, and it's been several years. So update us on what you're now you want to withdraw, update us on what your withdrawal plan looks like and how it conforms to or differs from that original alternative governance um, uh, report that was filed several years ago before you were actually in state created districts. Does that make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. They also have to include a plan, including a timeline, identifying the actions the petitioning town and the union district have taken and will take to transition to the proposed structure, um, and basically to um, make sure that they are operational. So what's their plan to become operational? And uh, you'll see on lines 11 through 12, at a minimum, the plan and timeline should include the actions identified in subsection D of this section, which follows. Subsection D, um, if you want to just jump to it as a little preview, starts on the bottom, nope, starts on the top of nine. Oh, little, oh, little, little D. D. So these are the, um, and we, we won't, I won't jump um, out of order too much, but just these are the uh, subsection D are the actions that the, um, uh, the new petitioning town needs to take in order to become fully operational. So lines 11 through 12 on page seven is saying, when we say you have to submit a plan, at a minimum, you have to, to tell us what are the things contained in subsection B. So then subsection C on page seven, the state board is gonna review that plan. I'm on line 14. <laughs> The state board shall consider the report and plan and shall provide the self-selected representatives of the, the petitioning town and the board of the union district an opportunity to be heard. And then the board may, in its discretion, take testimony from other individuals and entities. So are we going to see a timeline associated with any of this? So there, there are like days or months um, within which decisions or things are submitted and feedback is given. An excellent point. This draft does not contemplate that. Doesn't have anything about this? No. Oh. So it could go on or not. I'm just looking to see. I think there, let's see. <clears throat> well, so I will say this. Mm -hmm. This section is set to repeal on July 1, 2024. Okay. And um, there's an operational date that the new, the new school, the petitioning town is going to want to propose and work towards. 
They're not just working towards, um, uh, a, they have something in mind, they have a date in mind that will come into play in the analysis here. And in order, you'll see the off ramp is here as well. So in order to take the off ramp, they have to do that by October 1 prior to their operational date. So there's so it could be a year. Some some timelines, but nothing as specific as within 30 days of receiving the report. Um, nothing like that. Okay. Basically, giving them a couple of years to try to do it all. I, I, Twenty-four. Do you say it's your yeah, twenty-four. Twenty-four. Twenty-four years. Okay. Um, but at the same time, if I were the school wanting to do this. I'd want to know. I'd want to know when the public hearing was, or when the testimony was being taken. Or so, so the framework for how things were going to proceed within the two-year mm -hmm. time period. Okay. It's a really good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this and maybe whole, schools don't care about that. But this whole chunk is temporary. It's meant to address a specific set of circumstances within a certain set of time, but I think it's a great point. There's nothing in here that says the state board has to act within a certain period of time. Um, so that would be a policy decision for you all. You must be that um, so we're on page seven, line 18. So just like in section four, the state board is going to look at that report and it's going to make a preparedness determination only in here, they're also going to vote to approve withdrawal. So the state board has to do two things here. It shall determine if it is likely or unlikely that the proposed new school district on the proposed operational date will be prepared to assume full responsibility for the education of its resident students uh, on page eight uh, by the operational date. If the state board determines preparedness is unlikely, it shall issue a written advisory statement detailing the factors underlying its conclusion and the report shall be made public and posted on its website. After it makes its preparedness determination, I'm on line seven, page eight, regardless of whether it was a vote up or down for preparedness, the state board shall vote to approve the withdrawal proposal. So there is no discretion here on whether or not the state board approves the withdrawal proposal. It has to do it. Mm -hmm. Why take a vote? Uh, and so that they're taking action to approve the withdrawal proposal. But the vote can only be approved. Correct. Or if the vote is on the vote is on approval. They shall vote to approve. So what if the vote is zero to twelve? I think that the the the, what is contemplated in this language is that the only option is voting to approve. They shall vote to approve. And you they not, can't just say you shall approve. This seems weird to vote when there's really not a vote. Shall, I mean, you could certainly, um, I think that this fits into everything else the um, board has to do. So the board has to vote on some other things. Like if there's a, um, uh, I guess continuing on on page eight, approved motions or um, anything else necessary to, for the withdrawal process to continue to go, um, set a schedule for um, supervisory union services, make any other findings and declarations. So the formal action on approving the withdrawal is included in that voting contemplation. But I hear you. I I think you could change the language to just say the state board shall approve the withdrawal process and then. Mm -hmm. Move the vote down to a separate section. You can certainly do that. I also think it works this way. Sure. Sarah Marks. So, the looking at the readiness of the district to operate independently, in the school. To, is, so, is this an, uh, with just ignoring for a minute that they must approve it? Is this an iterative process? I mean, are they going to go back and forth about? Yeah, you're almost there, but you need to do this, that, and the other thing. 
Is that going to happen or not? It's no, nothing in there for that. It's not as silent on whether or not there can be back and forth. So theoretically, a school could present information that demonstrates it can't stand alone mm -hmm. and the board has to approve it. Correct. Okay. That's a little flag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. What do they have to prove? They have to approve that they can't do it or they have to approve. It just says they the must withdrawal. approve the withdrawal proposal. So they could put a, a proposal and it says, We can't do it. <clears throat> we're doing no, or, or we're doing it. And even though we, we don't have we a big plan, uh -huh. we have, we have, right, we're just going to do it. We've got whatever minimal amount of information. This, this is very strange. Yeah. Yeah. But the so board would, would put the information out. Yes. To, to the, people of the town to and then, then the only option to get out of the withdrawal is for the town to like a very emotional decision yeah could be made mm -hmm. so i would just say um this is meant to address a very specific set of facts mm -hmm. i think you will hear from witnesses from stowe and you'll from, just so we can be clear yeah Santa. i just keep this is what what call it is the Lamoille South supervisor. Yeah. 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 Towns into the Lamoille South. All right. Senator Hooker. Nope. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thank you. But uh, what are the consequences? I, it, so we'll hear from, from them. I, yeah. I, I want to hear what they have to say. But what would be the consequences of having a withdrawal approved that was less than uh, meeting any standard? I mean, that, just forgetting for a minute that school yeah. over there, but thinking of another school that just we, we want to get out. We know right. no one's going to tell us what to do, right? Mm -hmm. So, what are the consequences of that? And then, what role would the Board of Education ever play in bringing the new school district to standards? It just oh, it opens right. up a whole difficult place for me. I mean, the only maybe bit of resolution we have is that it disappears in two years. Mm -hmm. This section. This section. Yeah. But yeah, the that other things that are. Yeah. To, this but it sets us for, yeah, it sets it up a problem. The new section goes into oh. law. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yesterday. I'm going to keep my flag there. No, please Not do it. that yes, I don't please, love yeah. so, but I just found out. <laughs> so. <laughs> 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 I will say yesterday we spent the majority of our time going through the withdrawal process that would apply to everyone okay. and that potentially could um, alleviate some of your concerns. Okay. I don't know because we well, didn't talk about it together, okay. but yes, there's um, chunk two is the withdrawal process that's contemplated to be in effect going forward for anyone who has not started the withdrawal process already. As much as we don't want to say this is for particular towns, it could apply to any town. And it, I mean, another way to do this, with, to, which would help, is, from what I understand, is that the Board of Education uh, hasn't acted on their um, request. And so we could simply put in a timeline during which they have to reply and some conditions for override. I kind of think about that. I mean, that, so you'd have to have some standards in place so that when the district was approved for withdrawal, mm -hmm. that they meet those standards. That's all I'm thinking about. No, I know, yeah, yeah. And then I'm also thinking about what their relationship is with the board, uh, with the whole AOE, and Board of Education. I won't put it bottom too much. And these are great questions for our friends tomorrow. From, yeah. From Correct. Um, just for our Senator Lyons benefit, I will remind everyone that what we talked about in Chunk 2 yesterday. So current law, it's the voters, and then it goes to the State Board of Education mm -hmm. to approve the withdrawal, to essentially ratify the will of the voters. And current law says, State board does have the ability to say no, 
but only if they make a finding that the students are in the new newly created school district would not be attending a school that meets educational quality standards. Chunk two, which is what we talked about yesterday in, um, in H727 as passed by the House, the, um, there's a study committee that has to do a lot of work up front mm -hmm. to get a plan together. And then that plan goes to the State Board of Education and the State Board of Education cannot say no. And then the State Board of Education gives a recommendation and then that recommendation goes to the voters on voting whether or not. You can always make a motion to order the bill to lie, definitely. <laughs> that could happen here. <laughs> you have to listen. Um, so we are on page eight. So the state board shall vote to approve this uh, withdrawal proposal. Mm -hmm. It'll make any, it'll approve any motion necessary for the withdrawal process to proceed, including if there's a motion to create a new school district. Um, to enable the election of members of the board of the new proposed school district um, negotiation and voter approval of a withdrawal agreement in preparation to assume full responsibility of the education. It shall, the state board shall determine or set a schedule for determining the manner in which supervisory union services will be provided. Um, and it shall make any other findings or declarations um, and approve any other motions necessary at, or related to a withdrawal proposal. We're on page nine. Actions necessary. So this is that little D we were talking about, subsection D. Actions necessary to be fully operational. After the state board makes its determination of preparedness and approves the withdrawal process, then the new school district and the union district, and if applicable, the supervisory union or unions shall take all actions necessary to be fully operational on the operational date. And then at a minimum, this is what they have to do in order to be fully operational. And what they have to do to be fully operational needs to be contemplated and included in their report to the State Board of Education to begin with. Mm -hmm. So they have to elect uh, board members. Um, and then there, this provides for staggered terms for initial board members. Um, the, um, and their sole responsibility until they're operational is to prepare um, for the uh, uh, to assume sole responsibility for the education of residents. Uh, they shall negotiate. So the um, new school district and the union district have to negotiate the proposed financial terms of the withdrawal. Um, the uh, voters have to approve the negotiated uh, financial terms, and that is. Um, current law. So this is for requiring them to stick with what they current law. Preparation of a proposed budget by the board of the new school district for the fiscal year beginning on the operational date, together with presentation to and approval by the district voters prior to the operational date. They have to prepare for the provision of supervisory union services and then all other actions necessary, including um, on page nine, I'm sorry, page 10, lines seven through nine, including all actions necessary to address the collectively bargained rights of employees of the current employing entity. Mm -hmm. So if the state board said, we're making a, we think that preparedness is deemed unlikely, mm -hmm. then it has to issue a written advisory statement detailing the factors of that conclusion. And it has to submit that electronically to the board of the new school district upon its election. And then the new school district has to post that on its website and schedule the content um, for a public discussion. Mm -hmm. And then again, it's the same as what we talked about in the previous section. Prior to the operational date and after public discussion, they can go full steam ahead towards the operational date, or the school board can make a motion um, to warn a vote or the school board shall warn a vote if petitioned to do so by at least 5% of the voters. And the question is whether or not the school new school district should ask the state board to reverse its declaration of proving withdrawal. And so the, the school board can do that or a vote can do that? No, the vote, the vote has to happen. Has it's to whether happen. it's who um, triggers the warning for the vote. Oh. Thank you. 
Um, and then that same, the vote has to occur before the October one uh, prior to the operational date. Questions shall be decided by Australian ballot. There's the same sort of um, recording and certification um, requirements that you see throughout on page 11 to uh, lines 10 through 17. And then um, if the new school district on line 18, if the new school district requests the state board to take action, then the state board shall reverse and void earlier decorate declarations, um, approving withdrawal and reconstituting the new school district and on page 12, line three, and the union school district shall continue to be solely responsible for the education of, it, um, of those students in the petitioning town. However, the new school district and its board can continue to exist for up to six months to wrap up any business that they need to. And then the state board may make any other declarations necessary to make this happen. Um, and then line, so I'm on page 12, line 13, um, through the end of page 12, and then one through uh, nine on page uh, 13 are um, just some different language for if this section were to apply to a union elementary or a union high school district. Um, the concepts and the process is all the same. So I'm going to beat a dead horse, but so lack preparedness. They page can, I'm on 11. page, yeah, I'm on page 10 through 11 mm -hmm. and so on. But if the board determines that they lack preparedness, they, they can still vote mm -hmm. themselves or by 5% to become independent and be a school district and function. So the vote's already happened. Well, this, this is to pull out of the withdrawal. This is, this is the off ramp option. Oh, okay. Okay. So there. Okay. So, but during this time, if they decide to withdraw, there's still that six month period. But in the meantime, all the educational stuff for the kids is happening under the previous district. Yes, it will. No, even if they don't take the off ramp, mm -hmm. the um. Union school district will provide the education of the students in the petitioning town until the operational until date. Anyway. The operational mm -hmm. date. Okay, thank you. And that section five. Mm -hmm. So section six is very similar to section five. Okay. Again, we're on, I'm on page 13. This is meant to address a very specific set of uh, facts and circumstances. Mm -hmm. And this particular section applies solely, solely to a withdrawal action initiated by a town within a union district under current law. Um, and if each of the following actions occurred prior to that date. So section five was a state created district mm -hmm. and section six is a um, voter created district. So the union, so on page 13, line 19, the union district was formed pursuant to chapter 11 that was in effect prior to the effective date of section three. So current law as we sit here today, that's the voter created district. Page, top of page 14, line one. The voters of the petitioning town approved a proposal to withdraw from the union district. And the voters of the other towns have ratified the petitioning town's proposal, but the state board has not taken any action. So it's, it's almost the identical situation, mm -hmm. except it's um, voter created board, um, voter created district, excuse me. So page 14, line eight, subsection B, the um, petitioning town has to um, make a report to the state board. Um, and it, the report shall describe the analysis that has been performed by the petitioning town to evaluate the likely strengths on line 13 and challenges for the proposed new school district and for the reconfigured union district if withdrawal is approved and the ways in which withdrawal would enable both districts to provide for the education of their respective resident students in a manner that will meet educational quality standards. And then the report shall address, this is more specific up front because in section five, mm -hmm. you had uh, a situation that was contemplated for the town that wanted to withdraw had already done this analysis back before it had merged 
because it submitted that alternative governance structure recommendation to the state board. This is a voter created district, so there was no um, analysis like that done and submitted to the state board before. So this is a little more prescribed, but the process itself is the same. They have to make a report with all this information to the state board. So page 14, starting on line 19, this is very similar to what you saw in um, chunk two, as far as what um, needs to be contemplated for the information going to the state board um, for a withdrawal that the study committee analyzed. So educational advantages and disadvantages, um, line, uh, I'm sorry, page 15, line three, financial advantages and disadvantages, financial viability and sustainability, other advantages and disadvantages, including to the taxpayers, and then the potential source of supervisory union services. So the report has to include an analysis of all of that. And then on page 15, line 18, uh, subdivision two, not, the report has to not only include an analysis of all of those things, but also what is their plan to become operational? So we've done all of this, we've done all of this analysis, and here's why we think withdrawal is a good idea, but how are we actually gonna be self-sustaining? Here's our plan. Um, in order to assume full responsibility for the education of its students. So on page 16, the state board is going to review that plan. It's going to give um, the town and the union district an opportunity to be heard. It's going to make a preparedness determination. And if it, uh, uh, they can either make a determination that it's likely or unlikely for the new school district to be prepared by the operational date. And if it's unlikely, they have to issue a written statement. But regardless of whether, uh, regardless of what their determination is, page 17, they have to vote to approve the withdrawal process. So from here on out, it's exactly the same as what we just talked about. Um, the state board approves any motion necessary, um, determines the schedule for determining supervisory union services, makes any other findings necessary. And then um, page 17, line 15, after the state board makes its determination, the new school district has to get up and running, including election of initial school board members, negotiation of the financial terms, and then approval by the voters of that negotiated financial term package, uh, preparation of a budget, and preparation for the provision of supervisory union services, and all the way at the bottom of page 18 on line 16 through 19. And then subdivision six, all other actions necessary to transition from one school district to two districts. Um, and it's applicable to transition from a supervisory district to a supervisory union structure. If um, page 19, line four, subdivision, I'm sorry, subsection E, preparedness deemed unlikely, this is the off ramp. So if the state board determines that um, it's unlikely that this new school district is going to be up and running by its operational date, then the um, new school board, once it's formed, has to hold a meeting and post the, the state board's findings, allow discussion about that, um, and then at any time before October 1 of the operational date, they can either go full steam ahead or the board can vote to warn the voters of the new school district or the board can be compelled to do so by at least 5% of the voters and the vote is on whether or not to request the state board undoes the withdrawal action, reverses the withdrawal action. But there's no timeline for the term. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then um, if that vote is successful, then uh, the state board uh, reverses all its earlier declarations. The union district continues to be responsible for the um, education of the students in the new school district. The school district can stick around for six months to wrap up business. Um, and then lines, uh, see, I'm on page 21, lines six through 19, and then on to page 22 are again um, terms um, in order to make this at full section applicable also to a union elementary or a union high school district. If they do go ahead. Mm -hmm. And, and even though they found that their operation, they can't reach their 
what they have to do by their operational date. That just pushes their operational date further away. No, I mean, the operational date is the operational date. Um, that's a good question. I actually don't know if they can sh how easy it would be to change the operational date. Um, I assume that was in their articles of agreement, so they could there could be a vote on changing that, but um, I don't, I'm just trying to think through all of the different things that they have to do. It's not an automatic that it would just get pushed out. Um, I believe the operational data is in the articles of agreement, so there would need to be a vote to change it. Um, that's interesting. I don't. I don't know. I'm sure Donna Russo Savage is watching right now. Don't okay. Her down. Um, but I can give that some more thought, and then certainly Donna can weigh in on that. Um, Great. We could bring it back to us tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Helpful. And then again, this section is repealed on July one, 2024. Bless you. Section seven is the last section in uh, it's the second to last section, other than the effective date of H seven point seven, and that's very simple. <laughs> um, page 22, uh, line seven, withdrawal proposal with no final ratification vote. So what this is saying is if you haven't made it through, whether you're a unified union school district, which is a uh, subsection A on line nine, or union elementary or union high school district on subsection B of line 19, saying if you haven't made it, so I'll just read it. If a town within a unified union school district voted to withdraw from the union district under current law, as we sit here today, um, and if the voters of the other towns within the union district have not voted whether to ratify the withdrawal proposal, then the whole thing shuts down once section three takes effect, which is chunks one and two, which is your new chapter 11. And they have to start all over again under current law, under your new current law. Sorry. Does that make sense? So there must be a, there must be a town that applies or would be here. I think that's a great question for Donna. I, I, I yes, but I yes, I I believe that this was meant to catch every possible um, withdrawal situation that could be happening now that's kind of in limbo between new law and proposed current law and proposed new law. So, so there's no timeline. Firstly, yeah. So basically <laughs> it all applies to the process once they start. They took one vote of the first of the petitioning town. The other towns haven't voted yet, but they're saying too bad. Yeah. Do not plug two hundred dollars. We're not going to have to go. Um, yeah. So it's specific. It says um, if the voters of each of the other towns have not voted, um, or if they voted but the votes are not final prior to the effective date of section three, which is chunks one and two. And the effective date is off passage. Right, I believe right now it's July 1, 2022, which I would flag for your consideration on if, if this moves forward, um, whether that's an appropriate effective date. It would be nice to know that there were some date circles when all this stuff has to happen, so nobody's left hanging out with it. So we're going to start tomorrow with Donna, and then we're going to move from Donna to the state board, and then start to hear from those that are particularly interested in this last chunk of the bill. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully that'll give us an opportunity to clarify questions in language. I'm also receiving emails. I don't know if other people are people that are concerned that we're uh, there are issues of uh, I think it's Tim Reuters, you know, I'm thinking of used to be with Jeff Pierce, Tim. Uh, okay. No, I think it's Reuters slash Reuters dash something. Anyhow, there's some concerns that he's raising. He's an attorney uh, around uh, democratic processes that are perhaps not being respected. So he'll come in as well. Um, yeah. Do you know what town these are? Um, this is, uh, let's see, I don't, what does this say? And, and I miss, you know, I'm, I, 
misrepresenting him. I mean, really just some concerns around, you know, whether or not we're making a democratic process more yeah. complicated. So, Tim Boyer's demeanor or something. Is he large council? No, he, I don't know who he's with now. You'll all recognize him when he's yeah. because he was with Beth Pierce for years. Just to be safe, can we go through it again? Absolutely. <laughs> that was that was a 10,000 foot level. Now right, you now need to do the deep dive. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot here. Um, and some of this will be determined how much we get done, to be perfectly honest, when our adjournment date is and, and what we can get done. So you might find us trying to find ways to get parts done if we can't get it all done, again, depending on what uh, our time frame is. I just, you know, logically. So. Do you want me in the room tomorrow or? I would welcome that. If you you right. might ask you, why are you here? No, <laughs> are you here? I would be thrilled that you would be in the room tomorrow. And uh, that would be really helpful to all of us. Okay. Okay. Any other direction on this? No. Are you able to stick around now as well? Uh, S104, I think that might be That's Mr. Demo. Jim. Jim. Okay. I think I'm going to go take a break, but the, Good. Um, Good. it's not really great. Um, <laughs> don't worry, I'm still working hard. It, there's um, a lot, you know, there's a lot, and you know, I, it's, it's the reality is when, when you're taking in all of this, we are, it's going to take us a little while. Oh, you yeah. know, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot here and I need to talk to the corner office also just about what, what the reality is and where are some of the priorities as it relates to this. And I'll talk to the house chair as well, check in on how she's doing on our work. Um, and then, <laughs> and then, did you want me back today? I don't think so. Okay. No. Okay. Great. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Yeah. You. you did not draft SQ48, correct? Yes. Is that the um, governance bill? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is that on today? Well, we're just having a, a, a conversation. You can always, you can always catch it. On YouTube. Yeah, I'm happy to do that, but if you need me in the room, I don't think great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Would you uh, pass up? Uh, do you have Ms. Koenig's? Uh, I sent that to uh, the I coffee room. Do you, you want to go grab it? it? Yeah, yeah, let's grab it and then we'll, we'll, then we'll bring her in okay. after we grab it. No, that's it. She has a different one. Yeah, let's take, we'll just take a couple okay. minutes.